name is Dr. Vanessa Rizzo. I'm with Hope Veterinary Oncology Services, and we bring veterinary cancer care closer to home. In this video, we're gonna talk about a very serious but a very treatable type of cancer that primarily affects cats, and that is feline small cell lymphoma. If you're a feline pet parent, you're gonna to wanna to stick around. This is a very common disease, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. So what is feline small cell lymphoma? Feline small cell lymphoma is a type of cancer that affects the immune system. It is essentially cancer of the immune system. Your immune system and your cat's immune system is made up of a lot of different types of white blood cells. There's neutrophils, and basophils, and monocytes, mast cells, and lymphocytes. And there are different types of lymphocytes, namely B cells and T cells. The job of the B cell is primarily to make antibodies and T cells primarily destroy or help to destroy pathogens like cancer cells. And your immune system is not just found circulating in your blood. It is found in every nook and cranny of your body. It's found in the skin and the eyes and the central nervous system and the lymph nodes and in the gastrointestinal tract. In fact, it has a very strong presence in the gastrointestinal tract. You know that saying, listen to your gut? Well, that's really your immune system talking to you. Now, all cancers are a collection of too many cells, an overgrowth of one or a group of cells. For various genetic and environmental reasons, one cell or a group of cells kind of goes haywire and they're trying to survive no matter what. They do this to the detriment of their neighbors and to the body in which they live. So in this case, that one cell or group of cells are the lymphocytes. There are too many lymphocytes in the system. And a lot of times for cats, that overgrowth of lymphocytes is found in the gastrointestinal tract or the small intestines. However, we can see this disease in the liver, in the skin, in the lymph nodes, and circulating in the blood. But again, in cats, we primarily see it in the intestines. So what are the symptoms of a small cell lymphoma in cats? Well, the symptoms kind of depend on where the disease is, but some things we can see with small cell lymphoma, no matter where it is primarily located, are lethargy, a decrease in appetite, sometimes weight loss, even if their appetite remained the same, and vomiting or diarrhea. It's important to keep in mind that these clinical signs or symptoms can be seen with a lot of different diseases. They are not specific to small cell lymphoma. So if your cat is experiencing any of these, your vet's gonna have to investigate as to why that is. So how do we diagnose small cell lymphoma in cats? Well, whenever a cat is sick or exhibiting the signs I just mentioned, we start with a physical exam. And then we're usually also going to order some blood work, some basic lab work, which is a complete blood count and a chemistry panel. Now, unfortunately for cats with small cell lymphoma, usually those tests are normal. Though sometimes we can see an elevation in white blood cells on that complete blood count, but that also is not specific to small cell lymphoma. So we typically need to dive deeper. And for cats with GI signs, that next step is usually an abdominal ultrasound. For cats with small cell lymphoma, we often see an increase in the thickness of the intestines and sometimes mild to moderately enlarged lymph nodes around those intestines. Now I'm about to sound like a broken record, but that also is not specific to small cell lymphoma. It's just telling you that the problem is in the intestines. That problem could be small cell lymphoma, but it could also be inflammatory bowel disease, a different type of cancer, or sometimes an infection. So now we know the problem is in the intestines, and now we need to know what that problem is. Is it inflammatory bowel disease? Is it small cell lymphoma? Is it something else? The best way to figure that out is with a biopsy, usually a surgical biopsy, sometimes an endoscopic biopsy will do. A biopsy is where a doctor will take a sort of chunk of the diseased tissue. We send that to a pathologist and then he or she takes tiny slices of that chunk and looks at it under the microscope. 
They then describe what they are seeing. They describe what the cells within that tissue look like and what they're doing to each other. Sometimes the appearance of the cells is still not quite enough to say for sure that you have one disease or another. And the pathologist will ask permission to apply special stains or do a genetic test that can help illuminate more than just the physical appearance of the cells under the microscope. And once we've done all that, we usually now know what's going on. Now, surgery and endoscopic biopsies require anesthesia. Your cat would need to be under anesthesia to have these tests done. Sometimes that's just not possible. And if that's the case, there are other tests we can run that can help support a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease versus small cell lymphoma versus large cell lymphoma versus other diseases, but it's just supporting that diagnosis. It is not a definitive diagnosis. So there are tests like a fine needle aspirate of the abnormal organs. Usually I'll run that test with another test called flow cytometry. So we're using a small needle uh, to go into either the enlarged lymph nodes or if we can reach the intestines and we're extracting some cells out and then we send that off for a couple different types of tests it's not as good as getting a chunk of the tissue you know we're just getting a few cells out but it can help and the other test that's available is a blood test that looks for markers of inflammation versus cancer now again these tests are not as accurate as a biopsy, but if a biopsy is not possible, I think we should run these other tests. Okay, so we've got to the diagnosis part. How do we treat small cell lymphoma? This disease, fortunately, is quite manageable for a period of time with a chemotherapy drug called chlorambucil. Now, wait, hold on, don't go anywhere. I know I just said the word chemotherapy and a lot of families have a lot of opinions about that and, are, and it, that word makes them scared and, and I understand, I get it. But the doses of chemotherapy that we use in pets is very different than what they use in people. We really are trying to maintain an excellent quality of life while we are treating their cancer. So at the doses that we use, specifically this particular drug, it's called chlorambucil in cats, I would say roughly 80% of cats tolerate this drug with no problem. They simply feel better because we've put their cancer into remission. Now, if the cat is in the 20% of cats that has a problem, that problem is usually something like lethargy, a decrease in appetite, vomiting, potentially diarrhea, which are all the signs of the lymphoma in the first place. But it's my job as the oncologist to figure out if a cat isn't feeling well, is it because of their chemotherapy or is it because of their cancer that we don't have under control yet? And if I determine it's because of their chemotherapy, then I'm gonna change the plan. So sometimes I can lower the dose of chlorambucil. Sometimes I increase the dose, but I give it less often. And sometimes we add supportive medications, sometimes for a temporary period of time while we get them through the initiation phase of treatment. Now, some other treatments we can use are steroids. So steroids can be very helpful, especially in the beginning stages of getting a small cell lymphoma under control and helping a patient feel better. And then we also want to take into account, well, the whole patient, not just their cancer. So what is their lifestyle like? What is their environment like? What are they eating? Can we add supplements to their food to help optimize their immune function and keep them as healthy as possible while their body is trying to deal with cancer and now you know take on the chemotherapy there are supplements that we can use that that can help us achieve that now that's not necessarily easy to do in cats <laughs> uh, they don't really like it when you mess with their food but there are some little tips and tricks that that we can use to try to maximize the nutrition that we are getting into these cats now, things like diet and supplements, that is a big topic, and we're gonna save that for a different video. Okay, so what is the prognosis for cats with small cell lymphoma 
who are treated with chlorambucil, which is an oral pill that pet parents can give at home. The survival time for cats with this disease is, is variable, but on average, I would say we can see a good quality of life for anywhere from one to three years, sometimes up to four years. I'm typically treating my patients with chlorambucil and potentially steroids for a year. And then if we've achieved a remission and they've been doing really well over that past year, I will cautiously take them off of their chemotherapy and then monitor them very closely to make sure they are staying in remission. If they come out of remission, then I will reinstitute therapy. It is not common, but sometimes we see resistant forms of small cell lymphoma that do not respond to anything that we're doing. And even rarer, we can see small cell lymphoma transform into a more aggressive large cell lymphoma. But very commonly, I see survival times of one, two, three, and up to four years. And sometimes, because these cats are older, they actually succumb to other diseases, not their cancer. So if your cat has been given this diagnosis, and you live near a veterinary oncologist, I encourage you to reach out to make a consultation. That consultation does not commit you to treatment, but I do think that you will find that information very valuable. But what if you're one of the millions of Americans who do not have easy access to veterinary oncology? Well, maybe Hope Veterinary Oncology Services can help. Through partnerships with local veterinarians, we have been helping pets with cancer from Alaska to Georgia live a longer, better quality of life. We do this by providing unique, individualized cancer plans for each patient for that local veterinarian to implement no matter where they live. So if you feel like you need more guidance, ask your local veterinarian if it's okay to reach out to me or another virtual oncologist out there. We're here to provide you with the information that you need to make the best decision for your family. Again, my name is Dr. Vanessa Rizzo. I'm with Hope Veterinary Oncology Services, and we bring veterinary cancer care closer to home.